The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had grown up, and went, according to his custom, into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Is this not the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote me this proverb, Physician, cure yourself, and say, Do here in your native place the things we heard were done in Capernaum. And Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, No prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah when the sky was closed for three and a half years and a severe famine spread over the entire land. But it was to none of them that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. And there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman, the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up and drove him out of the town and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong. But he passed through their midst and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. There are two things related to one another that I think are rather significant in this Gospel reading for us to understand. First of all, we are going back kind of to the beginning of Luke's Gospel today. It's not the infancy narrative, it's not about the baptism of Jesus or, the, or even the calling of his disciples or the uh, temptation in the desert. It's when he goes back to the city of his origins, which was Nazareth, where he grew up, and launched his ministry with a proclamation which I have always seen, he went back to uh, Isaiah the prophet, he took those verses and adopted them as his mission statement. We all talk about mission statements, and mission statements are supposed to guide the course of whatever it is we do. A mission statement is supposed to basically tell us what our mission is about. 
And if you'll notice, the word mission statement is not something that we just happen to decide we want to have as our goal. A mission statement comes from those whom we serve. Mission means sending forth. And so Jesus' mission statement was an acknowledgement that the Spirit of the Lord was upon him and sent him. Sent him to do what? To bring good news. To bring what kind of good news? The good news that we have a loving Father who loves all of us and wants to see us united in a way that supports one another. United in a way that together we join hands and walk on the pilgrimage towards the Lord's kingdom. Now there's a difficulty because some are weaker than others. Some may not behave the way that we think they should. And our temptation is always to let go of them and maybe even turn from the Lord so that we turn to fight them because we don't like what they stand for. We don't like who they are. And so we fight them. But what the Lord wants us to do is in freedom, in renewed vision, to together turn towards the Lord. That means we together become seekers, not proponents or opponents, but seekers together. Now, the second thing is Jesus gives that mission statement, and the people are divided about him. And some of them simply say, who is this guy? We saw him grow up. We know where he comes from. No, we can't accept him as being what he says he's going to be. And, as so often happens, it's within his own people that they can become the most violent in their opposition. Even to the extent that, at the very beginning of his presenting himself to his own community, they want to kill him. They weren't the bad people, the evil people of his day. They were the good people who went to the synagogue to pray, to listen to the word of God, to study the law. But they were threatened by him. And therefore, they claimed the righteousness of God to do away with this one that they felt was wrong and an evil, a bad influence in their midst. How quickly we can turn from what appears to be righteousness into truly destructive fury. And we see that happening all over in our world, where people are killing one another in the name of God in the name of their own values, in the name of self-protection. And we have to find a way to open ourselves to God's grace and let him work through us to bring reconciliation and healing. And, as we prayed, true brotherhood among all people.